Hello, hello. Mic test, mic test. Is everybody hearing and seeing me online live now? Hi, everyone. I'm Hui Ling from Drama Box. I hope you can hear and uh, see me. And you can also help us to like and share so that more people know that we are already live because I know quite a lot of people are waiting for today's session. Uh, so for those of you who uh, need some uh, speech to text translation uh, interpretation, actually you can scan the QR code on the bottom right of the screen. You will see there, that's the QR code. Uh, if you scan it, it will bring you to the Google document which is um, actually leading to our dear friend uh, Yan Ying, who is helping us to type live uh, the conversation that we're going to have. So if uh, you need to read the speech, uh, you can take a look at the QR code here at the bottom. Yeah, uh, as I continue, so uh, my name is Hui Ling, and uh, thank you everybody for coming today. So uh, for those of you, it's not your first time here with us because I know some of you have been following the sessions over the past few months. So uh, please just drop us a note like say hello to us or hello to each other so that we know who is here with us today. Uh, and then I can also say hello to you. And uh, hopefully we can also hear some of your questions. Uh, and hello, Bing Tian. Thank you for helping rope in some people as well. Yeah, so uh, the rest of you, please um, also just say hi and uh, say hi to Bing Tian <laughs> and uh, hi to other friends. And do help us to like and share so that more people can come in as we uh, begin the session today. It's a very exciting session. Uh, but before I go there, maybe I give a little bit of context as to why uh, we at Drama Box are holding the session today. So uh, actually, this is the second time that uh, ICAF in Rotterdam, the International Community Arts Festival, has in invited uh, Drama Box to uh, curate uh, what we call the Singapore Hub. So uh, this second uh, round that we are doing it uh, this year in 2023, uh, what we have done was to have three online public uh, live sessions uh, where we invited our friends from the Asia Pacific region. So uh, in January, we had friends from the Asian, uh, along the Mekong River uh, belt where we have the Mekong Cultural Hub. And then in February, we have our friends from Australia, Footscray Community Arts. And today, we have uh, from Japan, uh, my new friends also from Toride Art Project. Uh, and uh, we'll be very excited to hear from uh, the executive director in a while, Yasue. And, uh, but before that, also to highlight that um, we actually do have two more sessions, but the two sessions will actually be uh, available only to festival attendees. And uh, it will actually be... Uh, in a way, close the door to the festival attendees uh, where we will have a panel about uh, Theatre of the Oppressed and uh, invited some panelists from Asia, uh, as well as uh, our local uh, Takut Kids Club, where the kids, is the second time they are participating. Uh, so we will do uh, actually a participatory session where the kids will perform uh, live <laughs> over the internet. And then uh, we'll be having a session where we have fun with the uh, physical uh, audiences there in Rotterdam itself. So uh, but to, a lot about that uh, later. Uh, but uh, before I continue and introduce our speakers today, do take a look at this QR code that I'm pointing to right now. So uh, for those of you who need the speech to text uh, interpretation, uh, you can just uh, scan the QR code or you can actually go to the link. Uh, I believe it's on YouTube and our Facebook comments uh, chat. You can also click there and it should bring you to this uh, Google uh, document where uh, our dear friend Yan Ying is helping us to do the interpretation so that it's uh, available for you to read it if you cannot follow the audio uh, as well. Now, as I continue, maybe I shall now introduce uh, the speaker of today, Yazue from Toride Art Project. So, hi Yazue. Hello, hello from Toride. Nice to see you. And, and also, uh, we were uh, having a chat about today's session, and uh, we uh, I asked if Yazue will actually sometimes prefer to speak in Japanese, especially during the Q and A. So uh, she has also invited her dear friend, who's also had a very special relationship with uh, the Reading Up Project, uh, Mio, who will actually be helping us to do the translation so that uh, Yazue can speak uh, and express herself freely, uh, and we can hear from Mio later. Hi, Mio. Thank Hello. you for coming and taking time today. So, okay, I think uh, enough from me. And uh, Mio and I will take our leave for now. And then uh, over to you, Yazue, yeah. to hear your presentation. We'll see you later. Don't feel too lonely, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Billy. So, I start my presentation for you now. 
So, hello, nice to see you again. And my name is Yasui Habala. I'm an executive director of Trudat Project. So today, uh, I would like to introduce you to our project in Toride City, Ibaraki Prefecture, Japan. So, first of all, you can see here in Toride. Toride City is located about 40 kilometers from Tokyo. Uh, it is a town with residential areas and a moderate amount of green space. So the population is about 100,000. This means that Toledo City is a typical commuter town so that has developed with many people working in Tokyo. So as commuting it to Tokyo is possible for Toledo residents, so many households go to Tokyo to work and the population has grown that developed in the suburbs by setting up houses and living here. So in Japan and probably in many other Asian parts of the world as well, these typical suburbs are spread out in concentric circles from the metropolitan area or large cities, right? Yeah. So. I would like to talk about how the art project started here in Toride City. So Toride Art Project, or as we call it, TAP, <laughs> TAP, started in 1999. What triggered an initial discussion that led to the project was the establishment of a new department of contemporary art called the Department of Intermedia Art at the Toride campus of the Tokyo National University of Arts in 1999. Uh, at the same time, the development, the development of the area in front of the Toride station was just about to be completed. So the city made an offer to the newly established department to install a public art in front of the station. Then the university's response to this was to propose an art project that would not leave behind anything but would create a project or activity that would rediscover the town. So uh, there was a critical attitude also toward to the situation where public arts are no longer treated as a work of art and an intention to create an unexplored community-based activity. So this was the beginning of this art project. So since that time, in addition to the Tokyo National University of the Arts and the Toride City, and groups of citizens have participated in TAP. So this year marks the 24th year of activities. Today, the project is still running as a three-way collaboration you see here between the city, the university, and the citizens. The core structure of the project was established in 2010 and currently non-profit, I mean, I mean non-governmental organization to lead the art of project office. This is a NGO's name. It's responsible for the overall management of the project, including uh, funding, finance, and public relations, and planning and operation of the project. So I have been a member of this uh, non-governmental organization since its inception after being an intern at TAP. So there are, you see, there are several project team running side by side within the top. So each project team is made up of different artists and interested citizens and professionals who work together throughout the year in the city of Toride. So there are also supporters who help us from time to time by helping with some activities or by donating to our activities. In our organization, there are two types of projects. Uh, those carried out in the form of an executive committee comprising Toledo City, the University of the Arts, and Toledo Citizens, and, and those carried out by the Toledo Art Project Office, uh, non profit, non governmental organization. So these work together to create activities as a, well, as a whole. 
So in order to show you the scale of our activities, this is our budget. So I would like to give you a brief introduction of our current budget. So you can see that uh, financial resources of executive committee and the NGOs are very different, different resources. So with the uh, executive committee, mainly subsidized by city, city of Toride, and the NGO during the soft programs in combination with subsidies from Toride city. But in recent years, there has also been an increase in, in commissioned project such as facility management. So I mentioned earlier that we are celebrating 24 years. And I think you may be interested in how the art project have continued in the flow leading up to the almost quarter of the century. So as you can see this diagram, the project actually have the same name Toli the art project, but it has changed its form according to the social situation and the situation of activities themselves. So for the 12 years between 99 to 2009, it was in the form of an exhibition. During this period, the project has set a period of time during which visitors could come to Toride to see exhibition of contemporary art and artist studios. They are open to the public. Uh, the turning point came in 2010, as you see, at yellow point. In that year, the project shifted from festival format to year-round format. There are several reasons, reasons for this change. Our uh, first is the situation regarding art project in Japan. Uh, in the 2000s, the number of art festivals in Japan with very large budget increased all over the country. Their main purpose is to attract tourists or promote local communities. So many art festivals with budget of an uh, order big difference from Tori days began to take place. So. What should we do in Toride? We thought this is what we had to think about. And also in 2009, a key person of our project sadly passed away. And in 2010, the budget was drastically reduced due to the change of the government. So in 2010, we, the citizens involved, decided to set up a non-governmental organization to enable medium and long-term planning. The core program was launched at that time. So from 2019 onwards, there was a greater emphasis on initiatives that build on these core activities, planning the basis and making art and infrastructure. So, uh, and one of the distinctive things I would like to mention here is that the main members who have supported, who now organize TAP activities over the past 10 years are the people who have returned to TAP after having completed internship at TAP between 2004 and 2006, and then later gained experience in other fields. So I am the one of them. I'm major in art management with the local local people. So I would like to mention about that not only those who came back, but another members who were involved in TAP during this same intensive period are now active in the art scene in various parts of Japan. So now let me introduce more about each period. Okay. Oh, this is this is our festival period introduction. The main project of the festival period was the open call for contemporary art and the open studio. In the first we, first year, we started these two at the same time, and from the second year onwards, we have developed the program in the form of public exhibition in even numbered years 
and open studios in odd number of years. So in the year of public call for contemporary art, we had set themes connected to the suburban town of Toride. Yeah, you see, for example, so Toride is located between two rivers, two rivers. So we use the word river as a theme or house or apartment block as the town had been built up by newcomer residents. So under each year theme, we open the call for plans and uh, plans for artworks and the selected ones were installed in the town during the exhibition period. Then following year would be an open studio. So these are some views from open studio year. Uh, Toride city is in a suburb, as I mentioned. So it's easy to visit and exhibit in the center, Tokyo, but it is not a large city, so rental, rental fee is cheap. So many artists have studios here. So these studios will be open during the exhibition period and related programs will be held. Various artists introduce the fact that they are doing this kind of activity locally. So over the past 12 years, the situation regarding our art project in our country has changed. So this is a change. This is an example, as I mentioned earlier, the increase in numbers of large scale art festivals like this, maybe you know, is one of the background to change the form of activities in Toride. So from 2010, it get different, uh, really it, it get changed. The project became a year round project. So we do the project all a year with the core programs, apartment complex, art in Danchi in slide, and apartment complex with art and half agriculture, half words as its access. So in both cases, we do not set deadlines for output. So, but lots of work with partner artists and the local people to nurture the activities over the multi-year period. So in the residential space and apartment block where people are of different roots and generation and position living on, live in one place. So what kind of community and what kind of small society will be created if the art project continue for a long time? It's the same of art in apartment complex. So in addition, an experiment has begun in which we continue to confront expression in a form that is grounded in agriculture and nature. So these two core programs are project with a narrower area, so tiny area, targeting almost only one school district or one local community. Therefore, we also decide to run alongside the framework of programs for children and child care or intermediate support and another mechanism to create access to the arts from the different approach. So this is the diagram of the current approach. TAP now operates four centers in the city, four spaces in the city. So while running these centers, we continue to work with students and artists on year-long projects. So in recent areas, public sectors such as government and universities have increasingly become partners in our project like that. So there are the four current our centers. So we will tell you more about each of them with an introduction of some cases. Okay, first of all, one of our core programs, they're at in the Tanji, at in the apartment complex. So we have been working in apartment block where about 3,000 people live with 20, 2010 to 2017 as our core period. So we have been working under a system 
in which partner artists and citizens carry out activities while jointly managing the activity base and the citizens challenge together what they want to do. So here is the, our base, the base of activity is Ikoi no Tapino. Ikoi no Tapino. It's a little, kind of strange name, but uh, which is a renovated empty tenant of a housing complex, as you see. So this is also base operated as one of the majors of the Toledo City elderly welfare section. So it also functions as a place for healthy elderly people to come and be looked after by volunteers. We are in orange apron, no people are volunteers. So we run this center together with a local resident association of the housing estate and the welfare committee members. So it is usually open as community cafe, but several artists come through and the program progress together with the citizens. Okay, <laughs> so this is one of our projects called Tokui no Bank. <laughs> Tokui, Tokui no Bank. Uh, tokui, Tokui means there are two words in Japanese that can be expressed by sound of Tokui. And one is what you are good at. And the other is something a bit unusual or peculiar. So the project was created by artist uh, Takafumi Fukasawa, who created the idea of bank that would collect and operate both of these tokui instead of money. This project is still going on the housing estate today. And the woman on, on the light, <laughs> on the light here, with the glasses is a really good banker. <laughs> so she managed to take care of the draw out what people are good at. For example, this photo taken after everyone listened to the poetry <laughs> by deposited by an elderly man called Ijima-san. There are now about 600 tokui deposited. <laughs> and also they are Japanese only, but they can also do, we can do also internet banking from this QR code. So, so you can try later. <laughs> then, so we have put out several music related tokui like this at once and turned them into concert or composed, we composed haiku, haiku poetry, Japanese poetry under the blue sky and all oh, put out specialties for children. Could be used for childcare, specialties that children and adults could enjoy together and turn them into festival together like that. So uh, this is our most recent, latest example. Uh, we did the escape game <laughs> in which the children had to solve a little in apartment block in order to escape like that. <laughs> but, uh, it was unexpectedly so difficult. So adults had to borrow the children's inspiration to solve it. And it's where uh, involved children and adults <laughs> struggling with a little together This in this photo. So these are the adults who participate thinking they will be able to finish in about 50 minutes or, but it's too difficult. So as a result, it took them an hour and a half to co complete the puzzle. So this is a different example. And this is other project called San Serif Hotel. <laughs> Maybe someone know that. So which we worked on with an artist called Jun Kitazawa. So it turned empty land in apartment blocks into the hotel. Uh, who will be a failure, uh, any interested person inside and outside, <laughs> like this. <laughs> the housing it never can be a hotelier. The people wearing the blue, blue tie, blue ribbon tie are hotelier, as you see. 
So after a public call, hotelier decided decide who will stay and who the guest will be. So and once they help choose their guests, <laughs> they meet at the base every Saturday for two months to prepare for the guest day. So some members act as chef and come up with dinner menus or they click what they create interiors to make an empty room to the guest's liking, or they dye curtains or make lampshades, and they also come up with original room service based on the booking application form, which shows the guest personality. So in this uh, system, where when the guests arrive for two days or nights, they do their best to provide hospitality. So another feature of this project is that it was born after the Great East Japan earthquake. So the guests stay only with electricity that they have made themselves by collecting sunlight like this. And on the night of the guest's arrival, a handmade night of sun was put up in the park of the complex, and it was held as a small festival that the local residents could enjoy together. So this is the last guest and hotelier. Yeah, so the next part of the project is the core program, half agriculture and half arts. Here as well, there is a base of activities and there's that's a where partner artists create projects with students for year-round activities. The more characteristic thing is the uh, Great East Japan earthquake happened right after we started this core program. So as you may remember, Tradicity is not far from Fukushima. So, and there were radioactive effects in our area too. So this project started with an investigation of the actual condition of the land uh, we are trying to work on. So to find out what kind of condition it was in. So we started by actually carrying out decontamination activities and measuring the values and then starting to get back involved within the soil to make sure that it was safe. So after that, we have been working on programs to experiment with uh, growing crops and to mix a traditional relationship between the migrants from the suburbs and the traditional farming community. So today, I would like to introduce some of activities that we have been focusing on in recent years. This with kites as a key element, <laughs> as you see. Yeah, in Trinity City, uh, there is an area called Takasu, uh, where there is the population in the city and the public transport, such as bus, and has disappeared earlier. So we have set up our base in a self-renovated farm, since we renovated space at the Farmer Agriculture Cooperative Office in the center of this area, Takasu. So about 18 years ago in this area, a local person, local people tried to fly kites the size of 12 and 6 tatami, tatami mats. So you see, it's really big, <laughs> but it didn't fly well, and it was lying dormant in community. So this kite, this old kite, was discovered by artist Satoshi Iwama, a director of Half Agriculture, Half Arts, who decided to make paper from rice straw and from the rice harvest in Takasu area and create colors from the plants we received here and use their material, use these material to revive, revive the kite and try to fly them in the sky. This is 2021. <laughs> yeah, so this project started in 20, uh, 2020 
just as the spread of the COVID-19 infection, as you know, was affecting the people. And it was difficult to restart culture and other activities that bring people together in Japan too. So we started by cutting straw <laughs> into small pieces and the pounding it, then grinding paper and using the kite bone. You think the kite bones had been made by local people in the area before? And uh, so as they are in a good condition and could be used almost of that. So we made the kite with the help of local people, you you as you see. So now I would like to show you the video videos of kite being flown. Can you see? So this is the Takase area, really farming area. The kite flew like this. So people put it together <laughs> uh, with lo the local people, the artists, and our project staff. So the people who gathered there, all members, flew the kite. <laughs> so this January, this January, this to this year January, we flew the kite for the second time again. So we hope it will continue to go over the new culture, kind of new culture and the new tradition that people inside and outside the Takas area can get involved in, and get attached together. Yeah. So then there is another base based on half agriculture herds, which has started with the aim of turning the student cafeteria in the Tokyo National University of Arts in to an art center. So we, as an art NCO, will open up the university from inside. So it is a place where young artists are drawing their daily production. They, they are uh, making artworks and the place for food that is open to the local community. So young artists eat, eat here because the university is a place where aspiring art students learn. So people from outside the university can also use this here. And the people on campus pay a bit more. <laughs> so uh, this is that we are a non-profit organization. So when we make a profit by eating, my people eating, <laughs> we invest in supporting the art. This is a system of this cafeteria. The food that the artist is enriched and the art project and carried art maybe. So we operate as a cafeteria where people can eat and can support 
the earth like that <laughs> maybe someday please visit us and the, we cultivate outdoor areas with local people in university inside the university to make there as a playground for everyone so we are trying to turn the neglected outdoor space into a kind of outdoor stage for performance or for music and for play for people for playground and the field where people of various attributes and positions and generation can spend and play as they wish like that so it's just the beginning it will be changed drastically from now and in same outdoor area <laughs> we have also started raising codes together with the artists and local people yeah <laughs> so the community and artists let go together and connected their discovery to their expression so they try to devise paint to make from the pool pool of gold <laughs> clay with many uh, needed into it and other things that goes it so seeds of ideas and expression are searched for in the daily routine of cleaning up pools and cleaning vegetation, vegetation and interacting with you know, human beings. So we call such activities transparent art centers. So also, if you look at the whole city, there are many, oh, like this, there are many artists around here yeah, yeah, and many artists living here. So we have increased project. We have cre created project to provide emergency support to artists affected by COVID-19. And we have created a media and tells what kind of artists have they been to read and what kind of intention they have for their work. So the media will feature interviews with about 70 artists so you can check uh, through the QR code and it will be available in Japanese and English from this April. So please check it after. Yeah, so another feature of our activities is here. Uh, in recent years, we have been a great increase in collaboration with educational sector. So when such project is with one of the city public primary school, so where artists work through at the year. Today, <laughs> I just visited the primary school and negotiated with the teacher. Uh, so it began uh, three years ago. It is a small school with about 60 students in total. And it's the last term the project is called studio uh, this is it uh, called this is a project called the studio next door so in when which artists with non japanese roots open studio in school to share with children so they work either in english or also nonverbal communication the people person who wearing a blue shirt is the artist so for example uh, this is the, this year's program an artist from Xinhai province china wanted to relive the techniques of mural painting in town plan 1700 years ago with children <laughs> so they make paint by sifting soil and crushing stones and shells and plants are collected and dried and crushed. So this is how they are creating the work through this kind of process. So this is our studio next door. And in the second half of the year, from autumn onwards, the children make clay from the soil and they have collected from local rice field like that and chop it 
and make clay vessels and burn them in the field. The program is called starting from the soil. <laughs> like that. <laughs> this is uh, in this February. The school's routine is that children also experience a series of very primitive and fundamental activities. Yeah, this is the last case study for today. This is a place with the aim of opening up the entire floor of the commercial building at 3D station as a platform based on art. It is called, as you see, Taiken Bijutsuba Bikobiba, which means a place to experience art in Japanese. The facility was created as a collaborative project between Tourism City, Tokyo University of the Arts, and JR. Uh, this is a public transport company, and Atole, it's a station building management company, and it's operated by TAP, us. So the venue has opened, uh, so this is like that, the venue has a park, everybody, everybody stay freely. And also it has an open stage of artworks by students who had completed their studies, studies at the University of the Arts, as well as a storage room that anyone can freely enter where interactive art appreciation is held. So through listening to each other's perspective on art, we accept that we are difficult from dif different from others and find it interesting. So art is here as an opportunity for communication. So accepting that people are diverse and have different values. So there are art communicators, as you see in these photos, uh, who try to create the communities that created in the station building through curiosity, who transmit those values, and who also work there. And after basic try training at Viva, they become actual player in the attempt to connect to the community and arts. Yeah, like this. And now they're trying to make connect inside building and outside. So I have told you about the story that is almost 25 years old. So I hope I have been able to tell you that it has con continued to change its structure and form over the period of time. So I'm sure that everyone in the audience today is a practitioner of community-based art or really have keen interest in community arts. So what we all have in common is that we are trying to find out how people express their creativity, and which is not limited to artists, but it's by all people, and how people can create a society in which they can lead happier lives. So <laughs> I look forward to deeper discussion. Thank you so much. I stopped my slide. Thank you so much, Yasui, and uh, welcome back, Mio, as well. Uh, for some of you who join us a little bit later, uh, we have uh, Yasui, who is the executive director of uh, Toride Art Project, TAP, and then we have uh, Mio, who's here to um, help with the translation, if uh, Yasui would like to speak in Japanese, so that, uh, you know, to let uh, Yasui uh, express herself more freely. So uh, before I go on with my first questions, I know that there are many uh, practitioners because uh, I see some of you online as well, as well as uh, some of you are also texting me to say that you are here listening. So uh, please, um, if you do have any questions, uh, please drop it into the comments chat. Uh, then, uh, you know, like, like Yasui say, you know, you'll be uh, great to hear from the practitioners uh, what questions you might have and the kind of uh, sharing and exchange that we can have. You know, her in Japan and me in Singapore. And I see Yok Bin, who is uh, Yasui. She's our friend from uh, Penang in Malaysia, who does very fantastic work <laughs> as well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, either you can drop a note to say hello so we know who's here because uh, otherwise I can't really see everybody. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, uh, and, and, and also your questions that you might have. So we can, uh, you know, get Yasui to share more about uh, what's happening at TAP. Uh, maybe I'll start off first. 
<laughs> actually, I was, you know, I, honestly, when I was looking at the uh, PowerPoint, when you sent it in earlier, I was amazed by the amount of uh, work that has developed over the many, many years. So uh, I wanted to ask, right, so at, as of now, um, at, uh, at TAP, because you are the executive director, right, so uh, how many um, people or staff members do you have at TAP? Because then there are also the, uh, the community residents as well as the artists, right? And I know you have a huge uh, pool of interns as well. But uh, how, yeah, how many of you are at uh, TAP itself? Ah... Uh... Please translate to me. Oh, at the end, hi. Eto, now, the ジム局コアになっているジム局は5人います。でも、えっと、さっきお見せしたように食堂ではスタッフを5名雇っていたりする感じです。あとはプロボノも含めて、えっと、プロジェクトベースで関わってくださるメンバーが。結構たくさん。たくさん。<笑> 30人とか40人とかプロジェクトごとに違うのではい Okay, so it's largely based on the project. So right now, the core administrational staff is five people uh, with, with some sort of specialty, some specialty in arts management uh, are five. But there's also another five who's running the, the cafeteria project at the university. And also four or five who's running the Viva, the art space, together with the station. Um, so these are separately uh, employed. Uh, there are also four to five people who uh, with, who work with us as a specialist for uh, pro bono, pro bono base, uh, the volunteer. Uh, in turn wise, we only have two now, but uh, all of these are people with specific um, specialities. So if we include a citizen who is just largely helping in many kind of the project all together, uh, there are about 30 of us. Mm, wow. Mm. Thank you so much. And uh, so, so usually who comes up with the ideas, you know, like, for example, developing from the beginning and then, you know, having the, the bank and then slowly moving to the hotel and eventually now, you know, the GOAT uh, uh, center as well as the cafe, you know, how, how does it develop as in who who was the one who comes up with this idea? Is it from the residents themselves? Then they have a specific interest. You know, does it start from there? Or, you know, actually, it's, yeah, how, how, how do you decide what to do next in terms of the project? アイデアは多くのケースでアーティストがくれます。でもアーティストとこうコミュニケーションをマネージャーが取りながら作っていくんだけれども、多くのプロジェクトは関わる人がたくさんいる過程で、えっと変化していくので、最初にアーティストが想
Thank you so much. Okay, uh, maybe I'll just uh, pause for a while to also highlight that if you can obviously see that there's a huge um, QR code that we have <laughs> at the bottom right corner uh, for feedback. So, I mean, some of you, because um, uh, you, you might, you know, be listening and then, you know, having some free time on your, you know, on your phone or your fingers. So, you can help us to fill in the feedback form uh, as soon as you can. Uh, but also, like to looking at the chats and the comments, um, we have uh, Kevin here from Artswalk. Uh, Yasui, actually, um, Aswo is the team. Uh, actually, Sulin was the one who helped yeah. me connect with uh, Yasui. And uh, also, actually, another person is uh, Janet. Janet Pile is here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she said hi to you all as well. Yeah, and uh, actually, I first heard about Tori Day Art Project from Janet's sharing. So, yeah, Janet, that, that's where I heard it from. And I was very inspired by the work. And uh, actually, Janet has a a, a, a a point and a comment or that she would like you to elaborate. So I'll bring it up. Uh, everybody else, please also drop in your comments and your questions, yeah? Okay, you can see. So Janet was uh, asking if uh, you can explain a little bit more about how you built the volunteers in Tori Day. Could you share a little bit with us? Mm. Yeah, I know. Different時代によって全然違うんだけれども最初は本当に 市民の中で何かこう掛け根なしに関わることから始まっていてでもえっとそこにさっきあ私たちがあのお伝えしたようにそのインターンシップ制度っていうのをまあみおさんもそのメンバーの一人だったけれどもその町の外からやりたい若者
uh, to to respect their agency uh, or being part of the program rather than just helping out somebody as a volunteer. Yeah, I, sorry, I just realized I'm muted. <laughs> yeah. So uh, okay, thank you. And uh, and I was also wondering, right, when uh, you were also talking a lot about um. Uh, how you actually build this team and, uh, you know, the artists coming in. Uh, I was also wondering, you know, because the, the arts managers seem to be pretty central to a project mm. like that, you know, such a long drawn and the, the artist actually comes in and really run their particular project, that particular aspect, but it's actually the arts managers who are holding, you know, the whole tap together for such a long period of time yeah so mm. how, how do you actually see because um my myself i'm a practitioner so that i'm the artist like that who will be working <laughs> with you yeah mm. and uh, i'm also looking at uh, you know working in community-based work um i think in singapore we are also starting to uh, develop or introduce the language of what these community arts can be and hoping that uh, you know more and more um, producers and arts managers who will be interested in this area to develop their skill set as well you know so maybe is it possible for you to also share or Mio actually if you also <laughs> will be able to share you know how the arts managers actually um, come in and the role that they play you know, being because you talk actually a lot about the stakeholders, you know, going mm -hmm. to the schools, going to the shopping malls, actually with the government as well. Yeah, so a lot of these um, aspects of the work uh, were actually managed by the arts managers, right? So, yeah, is it possible they can share a little bit more about the role of arts managers and, um, you know, actually how they continue to keep the project <laughs> going? Yeah. Yeah. Totemo, watashi tachi. おなんかねぎねぎらわれてるような気持ちになりましたけれども、えっとそこに暮らしながら関わっているメンバーが事務局の中に今4人いて、でえっとそのでもこれは私たちも課題の途中でなぜかというとアートマネージャーとして働くこ
Thank you so much, Mio. Um, I was also thinking, um, uh, so, so the rest of you who are watching, you know, like being very immersed um, in, the, in our conversation, to also please continue to uh, keep your questions and uh, your comments coming, you know, so that uh, yes, we can get some feedback on her presentation and her sharing as well, uh, you know, other than, you know, keep coming from me <laughs> who's asking the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, going, going back to the point about the, uh, the, the arts managers and the next generation, so um, they, the young younger, um, I would say, younger uh, people who are more interested in coming, I guess maybe they won't immediately identify themselves as arts managers or artists, but you know, they're really interested in working in a community uh, through the arts themselves. Um, so how do they first get to find out about, um, about uh, Tori Day Art Project itself? You know, is it because they were from the university or actually do you also get um, people from outside of uh, Tori Day City itself? あ、じゃあ、で、プロジェクトをやりながら、えっと、プロフェッショナルになっていくっていう過程を私自身も踏んできたし、えっと、ま、興味があるところから踏み込んでいただいて、後マネージャーになっていくっていうところがあるのかなと思います。so one of the newest member of the, the core management staff, uh, this uh, lady, uh, was actually born and raised in Toride uh, city. However, she did not know about the project, um, but she went to work in the, the Tokyo metropolitan area in, uh, in sort of theater or concert hall. And um, she came back to her hometown uh, uh, when she started to have a family and she wanted to do something uh, she wanted to be involved in something in the arts so she googled or searched Toride and Art and the Toride Art Project came up so she started as a volunteer <laughs> so that kind of um, communication sometimes happens and in Japan uh, the notion of arts in the community is becoming quite widespread and common uh, but notion of being a professional or full-time um, art managers who can sustain their lives by doing that is not yet. So I uh, also we also see the questions um, that asking about these careers but uh, Yasu herself uh, started to uh, started to work first and then became professional art manager and that was a training she had so a lot of the people who are interested in who joins in also um, start on the ground. Thank you so much. Um, actually, um, earlier on, maybe I also bring it up. I hope they can they can see if we can see the full question. Uh, this is from Sufan. Okay, and uh, Sufan is uh, actually a lecturer in Singapore who uh actually trains arts managers in the university. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so I, I guess um, you know, my earlier question about arts manager really speaks to her. So she thanked me for asking the question about the arts managers. And uh, she was also curious about this aspect as well because yeah, in Singapore, it seems quite rare to find trained arts managers in this area. I totally agree with that, you know, um, uh, being a practitioner of uh, uh, it, on the artist side, you know, I, I really... Um, uh, I'm excited to see how uh, over the time you develop and uh, on the ground, like uh, what Mio was sharing just now based on uh, Yazui's sharing that you know, they, they get trained on the ground and they develop their 
practice from there. Yeah. Um. Uh. Sufan, if you have further uh, questions or inputs, please uh, just uh, add on to this. Uh, with, with with regards to this aspect of the work, because you know, I think it's quite. Uh, it's a gap. I really see in um, in Singapore that we have as well. Uh, you know, I I guess you know looking at something like that over a very large scale, it really needs a lot of uh, manpower, which is why I think uh, Janet was also asking about the volunteers. Um, uh, just now you um uh yeah, so you mentioned about the um sustainability in terms of the uh, money for the arts mm. managers themselves quite a few times. Would you like to talk a little bit more about that in terms of um, is it difficult for um, them to sustain? That means they can only come for say a few months and then they have to move off. You know, how, how, does, it, how does it work and how then do, does a tap actually manage that when you, know, you have people coming in and going out all the time? Oh. ちょっと補足があると嬉しいけど、インカムのこと そう、市内、経済なり、他のあの民間企業さんから受けて、で、それを元に活動と職が最低限なくならないっていう状態は、あの、持てるようになったのがこの数年、4、5年、3、4年のことです。でも、えっと、さっきお伝えしたようなメンバー のすべての人件費をまかなうことがあのないから続いているっていうことだと思います。So um it is running just about uh as uh, yes it talked about the budget um there's a committee the executive committee and there's a NPO or, or the organization so the committee um applies for funding um uh, for the arts uh, from various places um so if they fail to get the funding um or the subsidies subsidized programs then there won't be any pay for that managers so it's a, a little bit precarious in there um and so that has been the way that for a long time for this uh, for this project but currently for this um, last three four maybe five years um that they started this mpo ngo part and what they do is as was in the presentation that they will get a commissioned work to run the spaces for um uh, from the city from the university from the private sector so these are stable income um to sustain the core members uh, so the project itself and the core salary or core pay does not go away because they are um, like uh, like accepting a commissioned work paid work so this model um, was finally established for the, the last couple of years uh, however of course with this even with this model um, they can't pay everybody's salary uh, which which as I explained before, like the, there's a lot of people who are involved. So people who are in the project basis or like voluntary basis, their 
pay will be determined once they get the result of the subsidies, which is which usually comes, um, the result usually comes around in the springtime, so this time of the year. Um, so after the all the results of the apply application for the, the subsidies, they will open up and decide uh, who gets paid and what they can do and what they cannot do. Uh, but also these members who are involved in the project basis, uh, many of them also has uh, other work or their own work. So um, not everybody is trying to sustain their full life with only this project, and that's how they are sustainable. I see. Thank you so much. Uh, actually, um, any any other? I have uh, actually somebody who couldn't uh, type onto Facebook, and then they actually separately text me, uh, to ask uh whether um there are when the funders come to you and they uh, provide the funds for say that the commission and um the projects uh would what are the eh, where's the question <laughs> oh yeah so um do you actually have a uh, like deliverables or in singapore we call it kpi key performance indicators like you know uh, basically what do you give back to the funders to let them know that okay you match uh, you know the funding and that's why you get the money do you all have uh, something like that in japan how is it like <sighs> あの、<笑> おおむねの こういう generous or um, not so strict um, as in what you may ha you have explained but for example the project with the art space at the station the commercial building <coughs> excuse me um, so the people who are managing that art space in the commercial station building um, are particularly trying to explain a uh, non-economical uh, or non-commercial value of the arts uh, because people who are who they are dealing um the, the the clients that they are dealing are not from the arts and but the the art space in the commercial building uh, is far away from um the what the, the commercial people will think as a beneficial or profitable project. So they are particularly uh, conscious about um, uh, explaining uh, very explicitly what is the value, uh, non-commercial, non-profit value that they are bringing in in that building. Uh, so that's uh, one thing. Um, and another is that when they work with uh, the city, it's a lot more experimental. So at the beginning, uh, there there may be some KPIs, but uh, along the way, when things start to move or change, the project, the TAP, will uh, propose what kind of KPIs or what kind of values that they could be showing. Mm -hmm. So these are, are also very sensitive and important conversations that TAP and the city has. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I guess it will be like that. That that's a, a certain way of uh, measuring it. To, uh, do you have actually a lot? I mean, because you work a lot with uh, education uh, institutions. You know, do you have actually a lot of people writing down the documentation? Like, I mean, I see you take really good photos and the lovely video of the kite. You know, <laughs> so uh, would that be also part of the um, you know networks that you tie up with uh, within the city itself, or you know, it's with volunteers who have that skills. ボランティアのところだけわかんなかった。はい。うんとそのあの学校とやったりするだけど、うん、その論文とかにしてる人がいるかというのと、えっと写真とか映像とかすごく素敵だけど、ボランティアがやってるのかとか、その誰かその大学の人がやってるのかプロに頼んでるのか,か、はい。はい。はい。えっとそうですね。あのレポートとかちゃんとそのドキュメンテーションにするっていうのは、まあ事務局が分担してやっています。で、うん、えっとでも論文論文他の人の研究対象になることも割と多いけれども、なんか今のまあなんか課題は、うん、えっと事業ごとのドキュメンテーションができてるけど、外に向けてのアウトプットができていないのが今タップの課題です。まあでもえっとその記録が大事というのはすごいもうあのし。ずっと前からタップの,あの魂なのでちゃんとプロの方に押さえてもらうっていうのをお金を出してアーティストの仕事として、えー、と映像作家さんに撮ってもらうとかクリエイターの仕事としてお願いするっていう形をとっています。Um, the, so report, make, uh, creating a report and documenting it is、uh, one of the important Uh, responsibility of the core、um, administration staff. So we do,、uh, they do that. And also、um, the people writing it down, like the educational institute or the students、uh, who use TAP as an example for their research,、uh, is also, also quite often.、Uh, but what、uh, TAP has not been able to tap in、um, the recently is the Is that that they are they are documenting and writing down、um, what happened and how it happened in each project, but these、um, the reports are not、uh, all available to the public. So that is、um, the the challenge that they are still carrying on.、Uh, but、uh, the the importance of the records and documentation, like photos and videos,、uh, are like the spirit of. The or basic <laughs> philosophy of the Toridata project, so they pay、uh, to the professional as part of、um, a work or providing work to creative people or artists,、uh, so that they will pay to the the, the videographer or photographer to、um, to keep the proper record. So I mean I think we talked a lot about you know the setup and the organization and how to keep something like that、uh, moving on you know because um I guess、um, for for the past um myself who <laughs> have been seeing the you know the past three case studies uh from uh Mekong Culture Hub to Food Scray to now Tori Day uh you know I think it. For tourists, that is so long drawn, and you have、uh, such a massive、uh, what we call footprint, you know, covering so many different parts of the city.、Mm. Yeah, so I think we have talked quite a little bit about that in terms of、um, the organization or how do you, you know structure around a system that can support the work that continue on. So I, actually, I want to、uh, now move into talk a little bit more about the. Uh, be the artist, the artwork, or actually the residents, the community. So, um, do they actually also? Do you have um, uh, because I I know the uh, if I'm not wrong, the tap tapino is the one that you actually charge the uh one hundred yen, is it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and then um, actually the rest, do you actually you know so called charge them, or actually do they donate it because they were part of it, you know? And then maybe after being involved in one project. And then they become, you know, that、like、they think, hey, actually, you know, I have some money to share. I want to, you know, pay for the next artist to come in. Does that actually happen within the community itself? To space を利用するのに寄付をして使っているけれども、アートプロジェクトのためにお金を払っているっていうあの住民はあんまりいないです。で、えっとアートプロジェクトのベースを支えるのに、あそこはまあ高齢福祉の事業ということで、鳥出市があの予算を取っているのと、まあ、そこをあのベースにして、やっぱり鳥出アートプロジェクトが、えっ、ー、と、この先の日本のため、ためにモデルになるようなという趣旨での文化事業の助成金を取ってきて、一緒に住民の方にプレイヤーになってもらうというケースがほとんどです。
There are currently, she says, um, no, uh, not really anyone who actually pays for the project itself, uh, uh, except for the people who donate to use the space uh, of the mm. Tapino. Um, the Tapino actually is a project that uh, they work together with the Toride City as mm. part of the welfare for the elderly and for the social welfare program. Um, so uh, the, they, they work together with the city, but they also get external uh, subsidies uh, for the project project that um, is aiming to create a new model of the, the arts and the community working together for the future Japan, which is um, the, the, the elderly and um, the f uh, which is a society with a, a lot of elderly. So um, that's the model that they use for the Tapino. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so um, I realize that some people are not um, able to type uh, their questions into the chat somehow, uh, but they have been sending me. So I'm going to type it out so that I can bring it onto the screen so that y'all can see it. Okay, so um, I have uh, this one question is, uh, what is the participation rate of the residents in the various projects? あの、参加してる人の中の市民はどのぐらいの割合でいるのか。ほとんど市民、えっと、なんて言うといいんだろう。市民。つまりアーティスト。うん。ま、レジデントってことか、あの、その地域の人っていう感じ。ああ、そっ
uh, might not conceive it as an art project. So for example, the, the skill set bank or the goat or the cultivation <laughs> or the hotel, uh, people who join doesn't necessarily think they are joining art. So therefore uh, not so apprehended or like be uh, scared about that. Um, so anybody who saw that any of these things um, triggering, uh, they will just step in. Mm. Thank you. Uh, I, I hope uh, that was actually from uh, Julius. Uh, so uh, Julius, we hope that uh, answers your question. And then uh, if you have any response, you can either try to type again. Or if not, then you can uh, send to me and I can uh, let Yazui and uh, Mio uh, know uh, what, you, uh, what you think about. Uh, or rather, if you have any response to uh, the questions. And then actually another one coming, I think the last one we have so far, is um, how do you deal with conflicts among the residents? You know, uh, but it's not, I think they don't mean the conflict on the project itself but the conflict between them, you know. So um, uh, this person has worked on an art project before where the residents are split because of gossips and arguments. Yeah. Hmm. This is a とするあ、um, so what they um, consciously try to do um, as a behavior uh, while running the project is to keep the artist and art managers and other um, the members relationship flat. So there's no hierarchy. So there's a flat relationship between them, and that's their um, that's their conscious behavior that they bring into the team. Um, so of course, uh, she said there's a lot of small conflicts co conflicts uh, here and there. Like I don't like that person, or like you know we have a bit of the thing between them. But when they uh, come to join the project, then they will put these daily conflict aside and work together. Um, also, another thing she mentioned is that uh, when they start um, conversation, they are super, super careful of who to speak first or who to uh, let know um, before they start the discussion or who they go to speak with. So it's it's different from each places to places. And there are people who uh, who who they consult with for this, you know, what kind of um, the, 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 the micro-politics strategy would be the best for that region. And that is also including the, the people from the city um, the, the side uh, also, uh, uh, the city management is also joining them how best that they can start or they can develop the conversation. And uh, having these people who, uh, who they can consult these things with, uh, is a great asset of the the Torides team. Yeah, actually, um, I, I also feel the same like uh, with regards to the arguments and gossip, right? Because the um, uh, I, I've also heard a case um, and actually worked on a case before. Um, not in Singapore. I was uh, studying when I was in the UK, and it was in the prison. And uh, you know, prison they have gangs and all that, right? So it was very interesting because the moment they walked into the workshop space where we created, it's like a third neutral space that was created for them for another purpose. And somehow, um, you know, the, the opposing so-called gang members yeah, were able to work actually and create a theatre piece together. 
know, and, and they, they set that aside. But the moment they step out of the room, you know, they go back into their little groups again. Yeah. So it's it's also very fascinating how uh you know we switch accordingly, yeah, but still be very conscious about actually who, like you mentioned, uh, we are speaking with and speaking to and what do we actually say. Okay, so um, I'm conscious of time and we have one, uh, I rather, actually we are out of time, but I would think this last question from Yopin is uh, pretty important. So maybe we'll just take that as the last question. And, uh, and uh, Bing Tian also said thank you for the sharing. Thanks, Bing Tian. And uh, let's see Yopin's question. Okay, uh, Yopi would like to ask, what will be a list of qualities or strengths of an arts, arts management team for TAP from your years of experience? In the artist, artist context all the time too. I don't know えっと。うん。マネジメントチームの強みってことよね。価値とか強みってこと。で、えっと、も、持つべきというか。あ、持つべき。持っているべき、持っていたらいい、持っている。ああ。強みや質のリスト。これとか、これとか、これとか、これと
Um, yeah, so I think that's a, a, a beautiful way to end the session. But uh, everybody else, before you all log off, please um, help us to <laughs> fill in the feedback form. But uh, before that, uh, please uh, thank uh, Mio for the translation and the hard work, as well as uh, Yazue for preparing such a exciting um, 60 over slides for us. <laughs> You know, and I know she, you know, really took time to write down her presentation that she can do. And of course, not forgetting YY, who is helping us to uh, do the uh, STTI. So, uh, thank you, uh, YY. And uh, also, yeah, we, now we actually see a lot of uh, comments to say thank you uh, for the sharing uh, and from like uh, Javon and uh, Bing Tian also. And uh, yeah, so I, I guess uh, thank you everybody very much um, for coming today. Um, let's... Uh, move on to our last slide which also gives you a little bit uh, more context about what's happening next so uh, please join me thank the two of them Yasuo and Mio bye bye <laughs> and uh, for the rest of us uh, we really really would help us if you could help um, to do the feedback form uh, we are really trying it's not really actually for any kind of KPI because um, with this um, uh, element is actually fully funded by ICAF um, so we but it's very useful for us as Drama Box itself you know to understand what you think about um, all these sharings they were doing virtually and uh, the, the different aspects as well as well uh, because like for example the STTI is the first time that uh, we, in the project they were trying this and how it works also trying you know like today while we we're doing the Q&A we start to flash the feedback form you know those are things that we're trying out to see how we can capture or allow people to have the time to slowly take time to finish and uh, capture the data yeah but uh, a little bit um, of a plug uh, for the last two events um for the Singapore Hub uh, as part of ICAF, uh, which is uh, actually for festival ticket holders only. So uh, myself and uh, actually uh, Xue Mei, who is my co-artistic director, plus uh, Shu Ya, who will be also uh, a part of the uh, panelists, uh, going to do a panel on the 30th of March. We will be in Rotterdam itself, and then uh, it, but it unfortunately will be closed door. And then uh, Heng Ron, as well as uh, Sunny, who is a practitioner from uh, Thailand, will be joining us, and we will actually talk about uh, theatre of the oppressed um, work in our different cities, uh, some of the challenges and some of the crises that we have faced, especially, you know, uh, coming out from uh, or during COVID itself, you know, reflecting on that. And uh, on the 30th of uh, March, we actually have a showcase uh, by uh, our TTKC kids, there's a, going to be a girl tie which we are working together with Three Crumpkins again for the second time. Uh, if you're free, now you can go down to the Esplanade. Uh, the Three Crumpkins actually has a, a, an exhibition there where the kids are doing some sewing uh, of their reconfigured new, reconstructed new toys. Yeah, so it'd be really exciting to see. Uh, so you can uh, go and take a look uh, at the kids over there. But otherwise, um, thank you so much, so much for joining us, especially those who have been with us since January, you know, following through. And of course, um, the different people whom I have emailed uh, every month <laughs> to uh, get you to either share about um, this project or, you know, uh, as part of my other project, which is pretty similar in terms of the, the ethos of the work uh, at Cassia Crescent. So uh, thank you for giving us um, your time and uh, your, your valuable questions and comments. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, yeah, we hope to see you at Drama Boxes events again or yeah, you can just write to us and you know how to get us. Okay, so thank you everybody. Have a good evening, uh, Singapore time. Bye-bye. <laughs>